Welcome to the West Ham Voice. Uh, I'm recording this at five o'clock, uh, so there may be updates by the time this video goes out on transfers, etc. But I'm going to bring you an update on what uh, I understand the state of play to be at this moment in time. It looks like it's going to be a very fraught, um, what, 29, 28, 29 hours before the transfer window closes on Friday evening at 11 o'clock. Um, it's still all about trying to move players on um, before we can bring any more players in. And there's a danger uh, from what um, I understand this afternoon is that we may end up not being able to bring any more players in. And I'll go through that uh, all in a moment. If you're new to, to the channel, please do hit the like button, which is down there somewhere. And please also do subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing to subscribe. All the content is free. And um, uh, add your messages as well and your comments on the video that's going out. So before I get on to the transfers, I just want to focus just a moment on the Carabao Cup that was played on Wednesday night. Now, OK, we scraped a 1-0 win. It wasn't uh, pretty. It wasn't the best game in the world. Uh, but we got through. We got through the game and we uh, were waiting in anticipation for the draw for the next round. And then, of course, we find, find out that the draw for the next round is, by all accounts, fixed. I mean, if clubs who are in Europe... Uh, do not have the capacity because I know the European competitions have changed and there's more demand, etc. Well, then just don't let them play in the domestic league, is what I say, uh, or in the domestic cups, sorry, is what I say. Because uh, I think um, it was a huge disappointment to see. I, 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 we don't even know. I don't. Uh, we don't even know how most of these uh, clubs that are in the Champions League, UEFA Conference League, etc., or UEFA League, etc., have managed to get themselves home draws, apart from two. And it, uh, it felt it, it, there was a bitter taste in the mouth, to be quite honest with you. I think it was uh, extremely disappointing in how th this draw was made, favouring favouring clubs that are in uh, in Europe. I mean, if you don't want a domestic cup competition, then uh, don't bother with it you know, rather than sort of fixing it the way it was fixed. And uh, if you do want a, a domestic cup competition, then the clubs that can't make it, who are in Europe, then they should bow out and leave everyone else to it. Really, really disappointing. Uh, and of course, what do we get? We got Liverpool in the next round yet again after our 5-1 drubbing last season. But you know what? Uh, I don't know what the dates are yet. The dates have not been confirmed. But you know what? It's about time we went to Anfield and we won because uh, it's been a long time since we have. The last time we beat them at Anfield, Liverpool, was August 2015 under Slaven Bilic when we beat them 3-0 with Lanzini, Noble and Saka, Sacco scoring the goals. Um, so let's see what we can do now. I think we owe them one, don't you? Right, a quick ref reflection on the game. We were aware that um, just before kickoff that Aaron Creswell has suffered a hamstring strain. We don't know how serious this is, but probably we'll keep him out of the game against Man City on Saturday as well. Not that he was going to start, but he probably would have been on the bench. Uh, but Aaron Wan-Bissaka uh, filled in at left back and um, uh, Vladimir Soufal uh, maintained his position at right back. Wan-Bissaka was brilliant. You know, he was just superb in the game. Um, you could see he 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 adds something different and he adds pace as well to the team. And it was good to see him being able to step in on the left-hand side. Not that we want to do that all the time. You know, it felt like a little bit of uh, a bit of a David Moyes situation, square pegs in round holes again. Uh, but um, I understood why uh, uh, Lopetegui would have wanted to keep Emerson fresh for the weekend because he's going to play a pivotal role at the weekend in our defence against Man City. Um, other players that uh, I think uh, stood out were uh, Kilman, of course, com looks completely uh, assured at the back. It, it better, he just gets better and better in a West Ham shirt. Now, a lot of um, fans were criticising Jean-Claire Todibo's uh, performance. I actually thought it was OK for the first 20 odd minutes or so. He looked composed on the ball. He looked like he wanted to carry the ball out. He looked comfortable with it. 
which is what I like. Now, OK, he got a book in and it kind of uh, pushed him back a little bit. But I think the reason why, I mean, I questioned when I did the uh, post-match review straight after the game, I questioned why he was taken off. But I think the reason why is pretty obvious now because he's simply not match fit. But I think he's a player that will continue to improve as time goes by. Now, James Ward-Prowse, I think he was okay, if uninspiring. I think he did decently. It did make me ask the question, is he really going to be sold now that he was actually selected to play in this cup competition on uh, Wednesday evening? I don't know. I think, um, look, his performance-wise, nothing nothing inspiring, but performance-wise, he was, he was okay. And I don't know. I mean, if uh, we were definitely looking at selling him, then why did we um, actually play him? I'm not so sure if he will be sold, to be honest with you. Crescencio Somerville, I think he did very, very well out on the left-hand side. Another player who had pace that's so linked up pretty well with uh, Wan-Bissaka on that side. And it was good to see. And it, this young lad is just going to get better and better as he acclimatises to the uh, Premier League. Now, Fulkrug. Um, the jury's out on full Krug, isn't it? We've got to say one thing is he didn't get a lot of um, uh, service. He was left in isolation and um, he's not the sort of player that runs the flanks. We, I know, uh, I'm sure you've all seen the video now of uh, when he was offside and the board was laid out to him and a defender caught up with him and even though he was offside. So we know he's not got any pace and he relies to be, you know, he, he's a, he's a, Fox in the box type player. Uh, we, when I did a, a review on him, when we were looking to buy him, you know, I said he's not the sort of player that runs the flanks or, uh, or anything. Uh, he he stays central, uh, but he will only be central. Uh, he'll only be decent staying central if we actually provide him with a, with service. And uh, we didn't really do that much uh, with service to him last night. Um, however. I think once he gets scoring and once we um, acclimatise to his game and uh, Lopetegui makes sure he's um, uh, servicing his uh, his, his uh, skills, etc., uh, I think um, the player will be OK for us. Because in all honesty, are we going to rely again on another season on Antonio? I don't know. I, I, I kind of think not. I, 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 I hope not even though Antonio has been a great servant to West Ham United. But I hope we're not going to rely on Antonio yet again uh, 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 to lead the front line. OK, what about transfers? Well, the first story is that, uh, surprise, surprise, Kurt Zuma has passed his medical uh, at uh, Al Aruba, the, um, uh, the Saudi Arabian team that got promoted into the Saudi Pro League. Um, so all that's happening now is the small print on the contract. Now, I, I, I talked about him the other day and I said I couldn't understand why it was being reported that he was on a loan with an obligate with, with uh, to, to buy at the end of this at the end of this season. Of course, you know, he, he'll be a free agent at the end of this season. And what my understanding is, uh, he, it'll be a loan um, uh, purchase by by the Saudi club, uh, but there won't be any money involved. So we're not getting a fee for him. And ironically, we're actually going to um, subsidize some of his wages. I suggested yesterday it could have been as much as 50-50. Apparently, it's a small amount, but none of us really know what that small amount is. Um, he's already on a hundred odd thousand pounds a week, uh, to, uh, to, um, get rid of his, to tear up his contract would have cost West Ham about 5 million pounds. And I think my understanding is he's going to be given a bit of a golden handshake of around 2 million plus the wages that he'll be on at, uh, his new club, Al Aruba. So, uh, we're waiting for confirmation of that. So uh, we'll see what happens, uh, what happens next. Um, another player that apparently is on his way is uh, Maxwell Corne. Now, we believe it's Southampton that are looking to take him on loan. However, there have been links to him uh, with uh, his old club, Burnley, and also links uh, with other uh, championship clubs as well. Leeds has been uh, suggested as much as it was suggested for Danny Ings as well. Uh, Leeds has been suggested as well. Now, I don't know uh, at this moment in time what that confirmation is. Uh, but what I do know is I've been told if he goes out on loan, again, we're going to get next to nothing for him. It'll just be, uh, you know, moving on his wages uh, rather than getting a fee for his loan spell. So that apparently is the nearest that we have uh, for imminent departure. 
apart from Kurt Zuma. Now, we've been told that we need to get rid of at least two players in order to bring in one, in order to bring in Carlos Soler. But it seems that we're kind of hoping that it will be a player that we can actually get some money for. Now, of course, I've mentioned just a moment ago, there's um, James Ward-Prowse. There is uh, uh, quite a bit of interest in him. Uh, Nottingham Forest, his old club Southampton, are looking at him, uh, plus one or two others. Now, I, I, like I said yesterday, I think this will be a reluctant sale, but it will be a sale that we might have to do in order to um, uh, generate funds to be able to buy other players. Another player that should generate funds is um, Nia for Gerd. Now, goodness, goodness knows what is going on with the Gerd because he seems to be turning down offer after offer. Not interested in Wolves. He wasn't interested in several other clubs that have come in for him. Apparently, Real Sociedad are going to be competing with Villarreal and Porto, who were named as uh, clubs that were linked to him uh, earlier in the week. Uh, but apparently also, we've received a bid today from uh, super rich Al Itihad from Saudi uh, to take the player. Now, we don't know what he wants. I think he thinks that someone like PSG or Barcelona or Real Madrid are going to make a bid for him, which seems very unlikely. Well, not likely at all. Um, and uh, so we kind of don't know. Uh, we've been told that it's it's quite possible that he may not leave in this window. It's quite possible that no deal will, will be agreed with any club and he'll still be a West Ham player uh, when the transfer window shuts. Now, I know that, um, you know, the Saudi uh, window closes later than ours and, and uh, there's still a chance that he could go there, but that would leave us short in the squad. Now, of course, what we can do if we do sell him to the Saudi league uh, and uh, we are short, then we'll go into the market in, in January and bring in a, another central defender because we would have run out of time. If he doesn't go by at least, what, midday tomorrow or a bit later, then uh, it's gonna it's not going to give us a good opportunity to bring a player in. There is, of course, uh, players like Chalaba from Chelsea, who we know they want to let him go. We might do a last-minute deal to bring him in. But at this moment in time, my understanding is, is the GERD, uh, has been turning down or offers hit left, right and centre and it might prove difficult to let him go. And Danny Ings is exactly the same. Uh, Danny Ings, uh, apparently... Uh, there's uh, interest in Southampton earlier in the January in the summer window that he turned down. Now there's interest in uh, in the uh, championship as well. I've mentioned the clubs Burnley and uh, Leeds United apparently are showing an interest. We just got to find you know we we won't know whether he's going to want to drop down a league or two. Uh, sorry, a league uh, uh, to the championship uh, to move on. Uh, it seems that possibly not. Now, there's the rumour that uh, if Ings doesn't go, uh, then we'll tear up his contract and offer, offer him a payoff uh, just for him to leave. Let's see what happens. It's interesting, though, that uh, players like Ings and players like Agurd and players like Corne, none of them were on the bench again on Wednesday. So there's a pattern uh, developing here that uh, these are the players that uh, Lopetegui doesn't believe are going to be part of the squad in the future. Um now, apparently there's interest in uh, Luis Al, the Brazilian uh, defender that we bought a couple of seasons ago. Um, apparently Stoke are the latest club uh, to express an interest in him. But this is in addition to Belgian, a Belgian club and a French club that we've still not been told who they are. Apparently uh, there's an interest in... Um, in him from Stoke uh, City. So let's see what happens there. But if he goes, it'll be for a nominal fee of about maybe three, four, maximum five million pounds. Now, a bit of a cash windfall will come from the sale of Pierre Requa from Sunderland. Now, when we sold him to Sunderland, we sold him for 350,000. Uh, but uh, we put in a clause, a 35% sell-on clause. Um, and apparently there's been a bid for the player for five million, but Sunderland want up to seven million for him. Now, if they get that uh, seven million, then we're in for a windfall of about two million. He's, um, I thought he was a player that would actually make it at West Ham. He uh, came in the same way that uh, Declan Rice came to us from the Chelsea ranks, uh, defensive midfielder. Uh, always looked pretty decent when he was um, when he played for the under 21s, etc. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. There might be a small windfall there. Will that be enough? Will the windfall from uh, uh, the sell of Pierre Equa by Sunderland and also the windfall from uh, Luis Al be enough to bring in a player? No, probably not. 
because that will only amount to at the at most maybe five, six, seven million pounds at most. Um, what about players coming in? Well, we're still waiting on um to do a deal for Carlos Soler. Uh, apparently, uh, the, you know, the interest is still there. The player has been made aware, being kept informed, etc. But this really does rely on West Ham United getting a sale done within the next, how long's left? It's now five o'clock, so another six hours today, plus another 24 hours. So in another 30 hours, uh, we've got to make a sale with substantial income coming in to be able to get Carlos Soler. Now, um, uh, all of a sudden, there was a, a link to Richard Rios from Palmeiras. Now, I think this was a link uh, that was uh, when uh, Steiden was out in Brazil, did, couldn't get a deal through. And all of a sudden, it sort of like, like reared its head again. Uh, and uh, apparently, the uh, Brazilian club have now put an £85 million price tag on him, basically saying, hands off, he's not for sale. And this last one is one that came up within the last half an hour. Uh, is uh, apparently we're making a surprise bid for winger Lucas Camp or Campos from Seville. Now he was at Seville when Lopetegui was there. He was one of his main players uh, under Lopetegui, but he's another winger. All right, he can play along the front line. Uh, last season uh, and the season before, he played you know as many games uh, in as uh, in the striker role as he did out wide, either left and right. Uh, but he's thirty years of age. He was loaned out to Ajax last summer. Uh, last uh, season, sorry, uh, and uh, played just six games for them, scored no goals. He's contracted until 2025. Um, apparently, we're going to make a £13 million bid for him. I don't really think that um, this is a, a very likely story. We need uh, another a different kind of player up front. That's, there's no doubt about that. But with Somerville and Kudus and Bowen uh, being able uh, all playing out wide, I'm not too sure why we'd, we'd be looking at Ocampos. And if we want someone that can play centrally, you know, uh, 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 rather than Fulcrug or or as a, as an alternative to Fulcrug and Antonio, then we should be looking for a, a, a player that's got pace. Ocampos, he's decent, uh, decent pace, but not the sort of pace that you'd want in your striker up front. That's the latest updates. Thank you all for watching. Uh, like I said, if you're new to the channel, please do hit the like button and the subscribe button. And I'll be back again very soon. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of more videos coming up uh, with regards to our latest transfers. But the highlight is, at this moment in time, the only players that are looking very likely to go are Zuma, who has passed his medical, and Maxwell Corne. Uh, but unfortunately, they bring no money in. Corne on loan, Zuma on a loan. Uh, but unfortunately, they bring no money in, which could put in peril our uh, ability to be able to bring in another player, specifically Carlos Soler. So um, thank you all for watching. Do hit the like button. Please do subscribe. And I'll see you all very soon.